Come here. Someone wants to say hi to you. Come here. Um, are you, are you, you don't want to be on YouTube? Just you sure? wave. Just okay, you can wave. All right, that's my son. Uh huh. All right, so. Are you done? Okay. All right, so Vincent Oontz just dropped this slide at Microsoft Ignite and it like outlines everything perfectly. I worked on a blog post um, on the Ublue forums about where we see Bootsy future and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the slide is just like perfect, right? Because you have Chrome OS, which is the kind of standard for reliability in the desktop, right? You have Core OS, which got bought by Red Hat and became Fedora Core OS. They rebased that to RPM OS tree. And then Flatcar was the friendly fork of that, continuing the traditional Core OS. Um, and what's really cool here about 2024 and beyond is system D, um, that, that probably implies system extensions and then Bootsy together, which is literally exactly what, uh, universal blue is. So that just seeing that slide, I was like, man, that's pretty awesome. So I am definitely going to steal that. Um, and that's from Vincent Oontz, not Vincent Oontz. He's the GNOME guy. Uh, Vincent Botts, who is, um, flat car. And now at Microsoft. Yeah, that's really, really cool to see. So today I'm going to talk about Boot C for a little bit. Um, sorry, I just got back from uh, from KubeCon. So I am tired after posting that huge update. So um, Boot C, oh, first of all, here's the nighttime uh, autumn wallpaper for November. We have a new wallpaper coming in December. It's going to be particular. A few of you have seen it, um, but that will definitely drop next week sometime. <laughs> All right. So check this out. Um, so Bootsy is the thing that um, we will be moving to, but Bluefin is already on. Most of you don't need to care, need to care uh, what it is. Um, Really, what you're gonna see here. Let me just get the. I sh I should have prepped this beforehand. Let's see. Where's my where? Where's my status report? Man, let you get old, man. Oh, you kids out there, hold on to your youth. All right, here we go. So this is my status report. I did here. You can just read that um, on the Ublue forums. I'll try to remember to drop a link. Um, but the, the thing I want to talk about today is the importance of um, Bootsy, Podman, build a Podman desktop, um, and ComposeFS mean uh, to the community and to all of us as enthusiasts, right? Let me get the easy one out of the way. ComposeFS, like everything's going to use that thing, right? And like um, there's a lot of the image-based stuff is like dependent on compose fs right so that's an opportunity for cloud native folks and lower le level system folks to like um collaborate around a library right more maintainers equals better maintain code right so the more communities inside of open source that you can connect together right um the more efficient things are and that leads to better maintained software which is what we want part of the reason we did a universal blue this way is we wanted to depend on uh, technology that's used in server, right? It's paid for, you know what I mean? And um, if some bank or somewhere is paying for enterprise grade stuff so that things get from A to B in the most reliable way possible, that's that's what I want my desktop to be, right? Because then then I can worry about the payload, which in, the, in our case is GNOME and, you know, all the stuff that you use on your computer, right? Um, so th that's really important. And it's one of the reasons that projects donate to organizations like the CNCF, the Apache Foundation. There's like a bunch of these foundations, right? I work for the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And since Bootsy is applying for Sandbox in, in the CNCF, that means that, um, you know, it, it's, it, it, they're seeding up their trademark to the community and then, um, it, it's it's a, like a neutral governed place, right? It's not exactly, uh, it doesn't really belong to Red Hat, right? They kind of donate the trademark, which is the important thing. 
Um, and then they'll continue to work on it because they're going to productize it in real image mode. They're already selling the thing, right? Um, so for them, it's about getting adoption, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that applies down the entire stack, right? So same with Podman, Builda, Scopio, these things like they're, they don't, uh, they don't belong to a product, right? Like nobody says I'm going to buy rel because it has Podman, right? They, that's, that's like a loss leader, right? It's a part of a greater portfolio, right? That their customers buy, right? And then, cause usually all this low level stuff, all the products and stuff that they build depend on that, right? So usually a pattern you see in open source is when something is commoditized like that, where it's like, you know, you're not really selling that thing, right? Like, like you don't go in an app store and say, I can't wait, wait to buy a container runtime, right? Like, you know, um, but there are companies that certainly make a business model around that, like Docker, right? So whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, either way, what's, what's really good is that those are under, under, um, community controlled structures. Um, and that kind of the long-term viability now becomes, uh, the community's responsibility and not just red hat, right? Like if you're into this stuff, you're going to help out. Um, and if you're not into this stuff, then you won't help out. And then the market just kind of figures it out. Right. But clearly I'm doing a video, so, uh, I believe this stuff works and I am digging it. Uh, I've been trying lately. Okay, good. We're only six minutes in. Um, so for us as a project from sustainability standpoint, it's, um, we want to ensure that we, the model that we chose, right? Because when I say this model is going to change how you consume desktop Linux, right? If, if we're going to go all in on that, right? We want to know that every, all the dependent bits are at least as maintained as possible. Right. And I think our project has also proven that you don't need all this kind of, um, distribution specific complex tooling, right? You could just do everything hosted on GitHub on your own personal account if you want. Um, and in Bluefin, um, Mark has been changing all of the build stuff into just just files. So that means you can run it locally, which you can try now. Look at the just file in Bluefin. So you can build locally, you can build an ISO locally, you can do all that stuff, but it also decouples it from GitHub. So if you have your own thing and you want to self host it, you can just grab you can just grab that. So hopefully at some point we'll get that into the image template. Um, cause you should be able to like fire up like a, a registry on your home lab or whatever, and then just run, just run your whole thing. I mean, that, that's kind of cool. Um, old me would have dug that, uh, not, not me more. <laughs> now I like to have things self hosted. So for us, that that's an important aspect of that. Um, but what you will see is when Bootsy comes in, um, RPM OS tree does two things. It does your image stuff and then the package stuff, right? Um, in one command, right? So the problem with that is the image stuff needs to be the image stuff. It shouldn't really, the packaging, they're like, they shouldn't be related. Um, right. And the second one is RPM OS tree install and then package, blah, blah, blah. Wasn't as nice as DNF. It didn't behave the same as DNF. Um, and half of you blues a bunch of workarounds to like be able to replace a kernel or whatever. Whereas in DNF, it's, it's very, um, straightforward to see. Right. And I know some of you come from traditional distros and, uh, you see what's happening in the container files and you're like, what is this? Right. Where if it's a bunch of DNF commands, you're like, Oh, okay. You know, that's, that's, that's in my history for my, for my terminal. Like it's obvious what it is when it's like more clear commands that you can understand. Right. And you get the nice plugins and stuff. So you can just add a copper instead of this long, we do like this long W get thing. Um, and that all goes away. Um, so effectively, um, Bootsy is going to just do the image based stuff. So it's going to be update slash upgrade switch, which is rebase. Um, I'm going to start calling the everything switch and streams. Cause that's what core OS calls their, what we call channels, you know, latest stable GTS. Those are just called streams in core OS. So we're just going to start calling it that. And then it's a uh, Bootsy switch when you want to rebase and that will switch you from one image uh, to, re to another um, Bootsy update. Um, and then the last one, Bootsy rollback, which is, Oh no, something's busted and it will take you back uh, to your, to your last one. So that's basically all Bootsy is going to do. If you use, uh, if you use, you just update, you'll just get nicer progress bars. Um, the progress bars and stuff are way nicer in, in Bootsy. 
Um, and then DNF is going to replace your local package management. So uh, if like right now you RPM will install and then whatever VPN software, you just do DNF install. But if you need to add a copper, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to just copy and paste the normal, like, the instructions for um, traditional Fedora on your Bluefin system. And actually work like you, translating commands sucks. So they just made DNF work on the layering. Um, but I do want to set expectations on that because a lot of this stuff is for us in the container files. So in the container files, we'll be ripping out all that RPM OS tree stuff and replacing it with DNF five. So that'll be clean. Bazite especially will look a lot cleaner. Um, but I know some of you are still stuck in the past and, uh, some of you think that you're going to keep this level of reliability, but that when you get DNF, you're just going to treat it like regular Fedora and everything's going to magically keep working. So just remember when you break that seal on the image, right? That's when you're acknowledging that it's like, uh Oh, I might have to do maintenance. Right. And a lot of that maintenance maintenance is, Oh no, a third party repo isn't sync with my thing and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, I'm not going back to that world. So I, I, I only run with, um, uh, I don't run with any layered packages. So, um, Z standard chunk. This is the, this is the, uh, let me back up here. So the images are rechunked now so that all the layers are even those of you the, uh, that have been with us for a long time. I can't talk today. Uh, we'll remember when the updates used to pull as layers and then bluefin was like a 1.2 gig fat layer at the end. So rechunk evens those out. Uh, and ensures that things that are close to the same life cycle are on the same layer. So it doesn't update uh, Z standard chunked. will be doing partial pulls of those, uh, which will get us that like Delta like uh, download experience that we need. Um, that's why I recommend for most of you just stay on the weekly builds uh, for bandwidth reasons. Those are fine. Um, but that's coming along. Uh, hopefully this spring is, is I think when they're going to be able to deliver that. Um, and then last we have SysX, which I'm not going to get into in this video, um, but I will give you some homework. Go check out the All Systems Go uh, videos on that stuff. If someone wouldn't mind dropping a link, um, there's there's just a lot of there's just a lot of stuff going on. And um, if you actually scroll down here, uh, Tulip goes into some of the stuff uh, that they've got. They got VS Code running. Uh, Fedora. Oh, we even have the just watch the, just watch the uh, videos in the, um, in the thread. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on outside of Bootsy. Uh, but for us, well, for me for a while is going to be uh, about Bootsy and then um, making sure that we're like ready for that. So a lot of just swapping out commands and um, making, making some good progress. I'm pretty happy with, with how the stable channel landed. That is the new, um, you know, it gives you the current version of Fedora, but you're like two weeks behind the uh, release. So that gives you about two weeks after Fedora 41 came out is when this just switched to stable. It's just like a uh, a faster roll than the GTS. I pretty much switched to it for everything. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there was a regression today in F41 for uh, people uh, with wireless authentication, uh, WP to enterprise. So people on edgy room and stuff. We definitely saw reports of people having to report that. Um, but 40 was untouched, right? So that's if if uh, the least surprise is, is GTS, um, which is, is working out interesting. So I'm, I'm always watching uh, for things like that. But even in stable, we are pinned to the 6.11.3 kernel still. Um, uh, we're waiting on dot seven at least. Uh, otherwise, tail scale broke. On, on newer versions of the kernel. So, and then that got fixed. So now we're just waiting for it to come down uh, through the core OS pipeline and then that will be good. Yeah, so we're able to pin kernels really quickly now. It's just two lines, um, you know, before it was kind of a manual process. So yeah, things are going pretty good as always. Leave your feedback and all of that good stuff and we'll talk to you.